wherever you're at, and if you're on the floor, you can hear me. We're going to get started. Just right where you're at, just lift up your hands right now. We're going to surrender. Surrender to the King of Kings. Father, we just bless your name tonight. We thank you and we glorify you, Father. For you are beautiful beyond our comprehension, God. Your majesty and your splendor, God, we cannot describe. So, Father, we worship you and we lift a joyful noise tonight, God, to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living God. Lord, we declare that you are faithful to us, and that you are true, God, that you are honest, that you are pure, God, and that everything about you is good, Father. We declare a song of worship, a praise, a shout, a declaration tonight. Come on, come on, sons and daughters, lift up your sound tonight, God. We are worshiping. We come to worship you, Father. We come to lift up your name, God, above every other name, God. We thank you, Father, in advance for what you're going to do. Father, we come with expectation, Father, for your will to be done, for your kingdom to come, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we bless you. We worship you and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name.
won't stop until we see you come until we see revival come in this place because you are who you say you are you'll do what you say you'll do you are always faithful and your promises are true you are who you say you are you'll do what you say you'll do
Jesus is in this room, here right now, here right now, making this place I sing, holy King, holy King. Your 
Todd digs into the word that I have. Well done. Um, well done. There's a thing we say oftentimes about sin, and it's very true. And that is that it will take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you there longer than you want to stay. It will always cost you more than you ever thought it would. And that's true. But whatever you magnify will become magnificent in your eyes. So what are you magnifying? What are you looking at? And I would flip that because I think tonight we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. We need to fix our eyes on the root of, of God in our life and see what that grows. And I would say this. In the reverse or the antithesis of what we just said about sin, which is still very true, there's a truth that trumps that, which is if you still have breath in your lungs, first of all, God has kept you longer than you deserved. 
but he also wants to keep you for forever. He will and desires to if you allow him to take you further in life than you could ever possibly go. And he has called you worthy enough that you need to understand you cost an invaluable, uh, an incalculable price. That was the cost of Jesus. So if you think sin's gonna take you further than you wanted to go and sin's gonna cost you more than you thought it would and sin's gonna keep you longer, you need to understand that Jesus, when we fix our eyes on him, he's gonna take you so much further than you ever could on your own. He's already paid the highest price and he wants to keep you with him for eternity. And you gotta understand that about yourself or else you're gonna be like a lot of us are and that is, oh, but I just messed up again. I'm, I'm invaluable, I, I'm not good enough or ah, I just did this. Hold up a second, who are you? You're the one Jesus, or God gave his son for. You're the one that he paid the ultimate price for. You're the one, you messed up broken one. You're the one that he wants to keep with him for eternity. Father God, tonight in this house, we're gonna turn our magnifying glass of our eyes, Father, the, the eyes of our spirit, Father. And we're gonna begin to magnify you so that, Father God, you become so magnificent in our life that we can no longer focus on the sin of our past. And if we sin now, all we see is you and we repent and we're right back to our focus on you. Father God, in this house, I pray tonight that the name of Jesus is magnified so largely. Father God, that we can see nothing else and we understand who we are and whose we are. But Father God, tonight we fix our eyes on you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for keeping us. We praise you in his name. Amen. Let's give God some praise tonight. Let's fix our eyes on him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to transition. We can fix our wallets on him. Amen. Hallelujah. Fix your bank account on him. Amen. Hallelujah. As we transition, take a skinny minute, say hi to somebody new tonight. You guys need an offering envelope tonight raise your hand the ushers will be happy to get those to you amen amen and amen as they are passing those out for those of you watching online we just want to welcome you here to the rock columbus uh, we want to thank you for tuning in tonight uh, hopefully you're getting settled in and prepared for a good message tonight uh, but as you're there in the comfort of your home or if you're traveling in a hotel room we just encourage you to continue to give uh, if you're a member here at the house and you can give uh, by the directions that will soon be behind me when Silas puts those lovely directions behind me so I don't have to fumble over my words. But you can give by subsplash. You can mail a check in here to the church. We just want to welcome you here. We are, uh, I'm going to stop pointing at you, throwing darts at you, but we're glad you're here. Switch hands. We're glad, you're, we're, glad, we're glad you're here. Amen. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing tonight? Are we good? Amen. Talked to a couple other people today, and they're like, I cried today. I was like, I cried today. What's up with today? I don't know. It's Pastor Ebb Day, apparently. We're all crying. It's not a bad thing. It was good tears. It was just tears. I'm like, man. Hey. Amen. The gift of crying. It's not a bad thing. Hallelujah. But hopefully you're doing well tonight. Uh, we want to welcome you here to The Rock. Let's pray over the offering. Father God, I thank you. Father, for Jesus. Uh, God, I thank you for provision. I thank you for abundance. Father God, that you continue to increase uh, this storehouse, both financially, spiritually, and relationally, Father, we just, we praise you, we thank you, and we will continue to praise you and thank you for all the increase we get here. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. Quick announcements, and we're going to rock and roll. Pastor Rev's got a good message tonight. Amen. We got a women's ministry announcement. We got a men's ministry announcement. Uh, where's Wayne at? You start your way up here, buddy. I'm going to give the women's one, and then you get to hear from somebody a little better looking than me. Come on up, buddy. Uh, women's ministry. The event that was supposed to be Saturday, April 17th, is being moved to June. Okay, so just mark that on your calendars. It's going to be June 19th. That is the Relax, Refresh, and Renew. Same time, 11 a.m. There's just a lot going on here at the church with the, uh, the marriage classes, uh, with the men's announcement you're going to hear. There's just a lot of good things going on. So we've got to flip-flop some dates. So just mark that. Uh, what you had in your calendar for Saturday, April 17th, is now going to be June 19th. Amen. Now, ladies, your May 8th brunch is still on. Tickets are $19 for adults, $12 for 3- to 10-year-olds. Um, invite friends, family. It's for, for all you ladies. Uh, you can go to Eventbrite to get tickets, or you can stop at the welcome desk and get those tickets. Amen. Wayne, get on up here. Let's give it up for Wayne Vaster tonight with a special announcement for the men. Good evening, everyone. So on April 24th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we'll be, we will be having the Faith Family and Fun Weekend. So right after service... Thank you. So right after service, we're asking the men of the house from the ages of 16 and up, if you will meet us, if you have time, if you will meet us in the back for like a 10 or 15 minute meeting. We will be needing some help on this day. So if you can, meet with us after, after the service. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Mic drop. Amen. Good announcement. Good announcement. So, men, we're getting together on the 24th, but directly after service in the cafe, uh, meet for some instructions. What's that? You want not just men, families, everybody, peoples, if you're interested, peoples, all my peeps, uh, meet in the cafe. So, uh, Purcell's got a, a big vision for this, um, and the men have a big vision, uh, and he had mentioned to me uh, when we met a, a few weeks ago, this is something uh, similar to what they did in Charlotte, and it's always been a success everywhere he's traveled, uh, different places God's had him. So I encourage you, if you're interested in outreach, if you're interested in uh, in-reach, you're like, what is that, Jason? We're, we can reach each other, amen? We're going to have a faith, family, and fun day with people from outside this church and for, with people inside this church. So if you're interested, please meet directly after service, amen. All right, what's everybody doing next Thursday? There you go, all right, good. We'll see you back here next Thursday. We're not dismissing, but we'll see you back here next Thursday. But uh, Prophet Kevin Leal is going to be here. Amen. Amen. And uh, Jason Lee Jones is going to be here. Amen. All the musicians are going nuts. All right. He goes nuts with the hand. All right. So they're going to be here next Thursday. Here's, here's what we want to encourage you to do. Uh, there's two types of people who, who need to be here. People who love the gift of a prophet and people who are scared to death of the gift of the prophet. Why? Because the gift of the prophet comes to establish a thing, comes to bring the now word of God for a change and for a thing. And so he's coming here next Thursday. So I would encourage you, if you have friends, family, I remember the first time I saw a true prophet in the office of a prophet, which is Prophet Kevin. People prepared me. So prepare the people who are coming. Let them know this is what a prophet does. It's a hard word. It's a good word. But it's a now word that's effective. Amen? So I encourage you to invite people out next Thursday. Let's pack the house uh, for Jason Lee Jones and for Prophet Kevin Leal traveling all the way from Florida to be with us. Amen. All right. That's all I got. Y'all good? All right. Kids, you're dismissed. Youth, I'll see you in the back. And let's welcome up our senior pastor from a with a word from God. From a word from God. You are our senior pastor from a word from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody excited to be in the house? Amen. Me too. Let me lubricate my uh, throat here because I'm going to be talking tonight. Amen. No dry mouth tonight, Sonny. We got a lot to discuss. Let's, um, let's start off by inviting the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can't do any of this without him. So. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you. We 
know that we can't do anything, Father, without you. For it is by your word that the world was established and its foundation set. God, your laws govern not only the spiritual realm, but it also governs our realm. And it is by your words we will be condemned and by your words we'll be justified. Teach us, God, to reverence your word. To hear your words, Father, words of life, words of encouragement, words of warning, words of sobriety. That in this age and in this culture, Lord, that you help us see through your lenses and be in tune, God, with the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we thank you, God, tonight. We, we rely upon your word. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. And I ask now, God, for the, the heaviness and the weight of your glory and your power to rest upon the people here tonight. In the name of Jesus, let us be encouraged, let us be challenged by your word tonight. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen, amen. So let me, let me go ahead and get this out of the way real quick. We, I mentioned... Um, maybe in the last several weeks, I'm looking at a lot of the young adults here. I talked to Zany. Uh, I talked to Matt. They're, they've been doing a phenomenal job with the young adults. Give it up for them one more time. And um, there's been a lot of people touched. They're, we're seeing the momentum there. We're seeing... A lot of the young people getting lit for Christ, which now, let me just let me just break it y'all break it down to y'all real quick. In this culture, in this age, to see young people begin to you know converge with one goal, and that is to to serve and to honor their God and to pursue their God. That in and itself is a miracle. Would you agree with me? That's a miracle, and so. Um, I know a lot of these young people need the guidance and the wisdom of the elder saints, the older saints. They need our support. You know, this, this, uh, not this past Sunday because it was Easter, but the Sunday before we talked, we've been on the Nehemiah series that I'm going to pick up again on uh, Sunday. But on there, we discussed how when the children of God took over the promised land, that it was led by two young men, Joshua and Caleb. And the scripture says, in the last day, I'll pour out of my spirit, old and young. So I, I want to make sure that we as a body, we give opportunity for some of these young bucks that feel a call for ministry. So I told uh, Matt and Zaney, God willing, this month, the next time, Pastor Dave, next week we got Pastor Dave and, and uh Kevin Lill and, and Jason Lee Jones here. But the next Sunday, I have to myself, I want to hear from some of the young people. Amen? We're going to hear from some of y'all. I already told Zany, like, like, pick a couple of them. Because here's the reason why. Number one, if we have faith that this generation is going to, like John the Baptist, prepare the way of the Lord, and there are some of them here that are gifted, if not them, who? If not now, when? And if they can't do it in an environment where it is safe, right, where it's like a scrimmage. How many here were involved in sports? Right, a lot of times before you, before you go to the game, you do a lot of scrimmaging, right, against your own teammates, right? It's a safe place. No one's trying to mow you down. No one's trying to hurt you because you belong to the same team. So I wanted to provide an opportunity where in this house, we not only support, but we give opportunity for young gifts to be expressed. Amen? And, um, and I, I know, because I've been hearing from them just about every week, how, uh, how God is, te is uh, uh, healing them and teaching them things. And uh, to me, is, is encouraging as a pastor. And then um, let, me, let me just give you another piece of why, how much... 
the harvest is plentiful and ready. I want you to say this with me. Say, God, teach me to be mission-minded. Teach me to live mission-minded. Quick testimony. This week, you know, we've been, this year, we've been on this whole evangelism thing. So this week, um, God dropped in my spirit, and in my time with him, he said, just be, when you live and you, when you wake up, live on purpose. Be um, in a mindset where you're observing, be attentive to the harvest. So I came into this week, and God was, like, really pressing on me about this. So I said, okay. So on Tuesday, I went to, went to the gym, to Lifetime Fitness. I know you're like, dang, it didn't show. I'm working on it. <laughs> so I go to the gym, and, and guys, listen, with that mindset, with that mindset. So I go, and I, I give my little tag. And there's a, there's a young woman behind the counter. She's checking people in. And so when she checks me in, you know, I'm getting ready to go. You know, they got to shoot that little thing to check your temperature. So uh, she did that. And I'm, I'm getting ready to move. She's like, excuse me, sir. And I was like, yeah. She's like, can you hang on a second? There's something we got, I got to discuss on your account. I said, okay, no problem. A couple people were coming through. So I sit there and wait 30 seconds or so. And then when it's done, she begins to explain Something didn't ha something happened with our system. Uh, the last payment I have it on auto pay. The last payment didn't go through. She's like, maybe it was insufficient funds. And I'm like, you got to talk to my church members about that. <laughs> Just kid. Just kid. I said, there's enough funds in there. It should have gone through, and my car didn't change. So we went back and forth, and it didn't make any sense because the months prior, money was coming out normal. My car didn't change. Nothing changed. But somehow something got hung up. So as I'm sitting there, she's like, let me take your name and information. And so she starts taking the name and information. And I, I go back to what God told me. Be mission-minded. Watch for opportunities. Because listen to me, church. I guarantee you there, all of us here, we miss opportunities every day. Definitely every week. Where we share the gospel because we're, we're just too busy, right? We're just focusing on it. We got what well, we got to do. We got to do this. We got to do that. And we miss opportunities right in front of our faces. So I'm sitting there and I, and I feel the Holy Ghost begin to stir in me. And I'm like, okay. And all of a sudden I start getting words for this young lady. And I'm like, okay, I'm at the gym. All right, Lord. So as I'm talking to her, uh, as I begin to talk to her, Lord, I want you to burn some calories, okay? Just so taken away from my time to work out. Just kidding. Just kidding. But I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, okay, how do I do this? So then God gives me the words, and I, and I look at her, and I say, um, do you believe in, in God? First, I said, let me ask you a question. You know, it's going to be a little weird, but... Is it okay if I ask you a question? She's like, and you could tell she was a little bit hesitant. Because we live in a crazy world, right? You ask a young lady, can I ask you a weird question? <laughs> and I said, it's just, you know, just give me an opportunity. And she's like, yeah. And I could tell she was a little bit flustered. And I said, do you believe in God? She's like, well, yeah. And I said, do you believe that God will use people and speak through people to talk to other people? And she's like, well, yeah, yeah, I guess. And I said, I'm asking this question because I believe the Lord was showing me some things about you. And I just wanted to share them with you. Is that okay? She's like, sure. So I'm sitting there and I start talking to her. Her name was Taylor. So I start talking to her, giving her what I felt the Lord was giving me. And started talking a little bit about her past, the things she's been through. Started getting into some seasons in her life. Within, I am not lying to you, within a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, her eyes begin to fill with tears. And, and the whole time I'm talking, she's like, this, this is weird. This is weird. She's like, I don't mean it in a bad way. This is, 
how do you know that? And I was like, this is the Holy Spirit talking to you, Taylor. And I keep going, and, and people are coming in, and you could tell she's fighting not to allow the floodgates to come. And all this happened within about a three-minute time frame. By the time I was done, she was telling me. This is what she said to me. She says, I'm a recovering drug addict. I've been clean for three years. She says, lately, I've had it really rough. Eyes filled with tears. And she says, I've been really battling in my mind to not go back. And she says, it's crazy that you would, because I shared with her the love of, of Christ. She's like, it's crazy to me how you would share this with me today. Because this is, like, I've been struggling. Like, today, like, this has been on me, like, this week. So I said to her, um, I know a place that you should go. Oh, it's, it's called Refi. <laughs> I gave her my contact. And I said, you know, I told her it was Tuesday. So she worked. I think it was a work schedule. Couldn't. She wasn't able to make it. But I have her in my sights. And I want you guys to pray for Taylor. For Taylor. That was Tuesday. I, I shared this with Heather yesterday. Throughout the whole week, I lost count, guys. Please listen to me. I lost count of how many people I was interacting with Lowe's, fast food joint, Walmart, Sam's Club. I have lost count how many people that I saw when I looked at their arms, scars from them cutting themselves, cutting themselves. A lot of young people. When the Bible says don't pray for the harvest, pray for the laborers. There's got to be a point where we as Christians, we've been enlightened to the truth and the power of God and the love of God. There's got to be a point where we remove ourselves from our blessed assurance, okay, from sitting down, from just doing the normal motion, and we say, Lord, use me. Even if it's tell, to tell somebody, let me, let me say something. You know Jesus loves you. Just those words. You know you matter. Amen? Amen? Mission-minded. Say that, mission-minded. Okay, so I know I got on a bunny trail. Not even, this is not even what I was going to discuss tonight. But um, tonight is kind of a, a one-off. Once in a while, I mentioned this to you guys before, you know, going into 2021. I said there's, I'm going to be focused on kingdom building going to be focused on evangelism, preaching the gospel. But, and I mentioned this to you guys, once in a while I will have to address certain things that are happening um, to make sure that as a, as a body, we as a body know what's coming and know the direction and know how to position ourselves to engage what's getting ready to hit. Okay? Evangelism is a, is a piece of that. But... Um, I know this is, may sound weird, but the title for tonight's message is The British Are Coming. The British Are Coming. I'm not talking about Austin Powers. If y'all seen the movie. <laughs> All right, so, and I thought about this yesterday when I was in prayer, and I'm like, I, I, just, I just heard that, so we'll go with it. Uh, in the spring of 1775, uh, I'm going to take you back, tension had risen between American colonists and British authorities. For any of you guys that are history buffs. A rebellion was forming. British commanders authorized a secret march to capture Samuel Adams and John Hancock in Lexington and seize hidden weapons in Concord. Paul Revere, in attempts to alert the colonies, rode throughout Lexington saying, The British are coming! The red coats are coming. The single event triggered a resistance that triggered the American Revolution. It was by one man blowing the whistle 
sounding the alarm that were, they were able to in that short period of time, I believe it was 700 redcoats, they were able to muster up enough resistance and that triggered the American Revolution. The British are coming. As far as this message is concerned, it's not a weapon that is forged with the hands of man. This is not a, it's not a natural, physical battle. It is a spiritual battle. And I'm telling you tonight, I would say the, if I can coin the same phrase, the British are coming. But instead of the British, I would say the agents of Satan, the spirit of the Antichrist is coming. It's coming. And we, we must understand and we must position ourselves in a, in a place where we have to be aware of the things that are happening. Because here's what I see happening. People of different cultures, there is a separation, there is a, a shifting that is taking place, and there's a sifting that's taking place. The scripture says the hot will get hotter, the cold will get colder. So there is a, a, a coalescing of people gravitating towards one area in the opposite area. So there's now there's this, this pull and there's warfare. And just about every week, every week, I'm hearing reports and I'm hearing things that as a, as a pastor and as a, as a studied man of the word, I, it's literally leaving me in a place where I'm scratching my head and I'm saying to, to God, Lord, I knew this stuff was coming. I did not know it was coming that fast on the heel of another. It is unraveling so fast that I've said this two times from the pulpit. This is the second time I'm going to say it from the pulpit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to qualify it here in a second. If you ask me, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, guys, I don't think we have 10 years. I don't think we have, I don't, I don't think we have a decade. At the pace we're going, I'm going to show you some things. At the pace we're going, I'm not saying stop paying your mortgages. Let's use some common sense here, okay? Let's use some common sense. I'm not saying, you know, put off your plans to go to college. I always say, you know, live your day like it's your last day. Plan like you're going to be t here till 100. But everything, if I was to get into the details of everything, I'd burn up hours. But I am telling you, I am studied in the word. Everything that I know about prophecy, about end time stuff, I don't think we have 10 years. And if you live and you really believe that, don't you know your priorities will drastically change? Because many of us are holding on to these, these dreams that are anchored in earthly things. Paying off mortgages, holding on to our money, you know, starting businesses and just, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot wrong with that when you lose sight of kingdom. Amen? You lose sight of kingdom. Uh, I mentioned, this is, it, it, and it's difficult, man, to, a lot of times when you, when you talk about this stuff, and you, you may be saying, your pastor, you're going into eschatology thing. Not really. I'm not going to, too much into eschatology tonight. I'm just, I want to address some of the things that's happened in the last several days, several weeks. That for Christians, you should take notice of. You should take notice of. Why? It's better to be, what does the Bible say? I've set you as a watchman on the tower. All of us play that role. Behind the walls is the kingdom of God. It's the people of God. And we as pastors, we as prophets, we, are, we as leaders are set on the watchtower. When we see a threat coming, it is our responsibility to sound the alarm. Why? If you're caught unawares, man, what would happen if Bevere wouldn't run out sounding the alarm? Maybe we wouldn't be here today. Maybe America wouldn't be uh, America. But there are things right now happening. There are things that are triggering one event after another that I wanted to bring to your attention. I, I like to start off by reading 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Um, we're going to read from verses 1 to 12. And this is talking about the great apostasy. 
um, and again, events that are triggering right now. So, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, I cannot wait for that day, man. I can't wait for that day. We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Verse 3, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Pause right there. We discussed this before. We're not going to go into it, the falling away of the people that once served God and are no longer serving him. They fall away from the faith. I, I mentioned last week when we talked about the, um, the issue of the law. Remember that? I said there was two things that are deceptive, very dangerous doctrines. That was the grace message. We under grace. We can live how we want to live. You know, God is good at forgiving. I'm good at sinning. Match made in heaven. Right? That's a deceptive, dangerous doctrine. And the other doctrine was once saved, always saved. And I told you guys at some point this year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that, that doctrine. Most of the people that I listen, that I respect, teach once saved, always saved. And I'm going to tell you that is unbiblical. That's unbiblical. There are too many passages that confirm that. So he's talking about the falling away here first. That must come first. And we have seen in the last decade a massive exodus from the faith. Massive exodus from the faith. Much of that comes from persecution. Uh, we'll, we'll get that. We'll get uh, there in a moment. Um, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. When, when we see, if you, if you want to underline Underline, falling away, underline, men of sin is revealed, and underline, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. Understand that phrase right there, exalts himself above all that is called God, is what is God? You have the Bible, full of laws that communicate God's nature and God's character. What Apostle Paul here is saying, he's going to challenge everything that the Word says about God. Okay, I want you to follow me. Or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Just this week, I got a video, YouTube, which I normally don't get it from Pastor Dave. You watch this. So I, I click on it, and I'm like, ooh, this is a little treat. Pastor Dave, send, I usually send him videos. He doesn't usually send me videos. So I go on there and I watch this video. It is a guy by the name of Jiziahu Ben David. I don't know if you, any of you have heard that. This is, this is, it was a video showing this guy in Israel walking to the Wailing Wall with an entourage of priests, okay, religious leaders in Israel. The head rabbis are saying that they have crowned their Messiah in Israel. Listen, they've done it in private. Now, I saw the video myself. The guy's at the Wailing Wall. There's a bunch of rabbis around him, and he's, he's 30 years old. When did Jesus begin his ministry? When he was 30. He's 30 years, and, and I, I, I didn't bring a picture, but I want to show you. When I saw it, I'm like, huh, the guy wears glasses. Like, come on, Jesus. Come on, man. Like, come on. Seriously, bro? Glasses. Listen. <laughs> he, they've crowned their Messiah in private and will crown him soon in public. If this is true, now I'm not, I'm, I'm submitting this, what I saw. I saw he was in holy land praying at the wailing wall with a bunch of rabbis. And they were, you should have seen, he was like a celebrity. And these, these rabbis are not just some random schmo, uh, Joe Schmoes. These guys are like high political in the, in the realm of, of uh, Israel's laws and, 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 
you know, religious leaders, they're the big shots. One, one guy there, I can't remember his name, is one of the top guys, one of the top rabbis. And they were chasing him like, like, like dogs. If this is true, if in the weeks to come, and, and this is what they said, fulfilling Kaduri's and uh, Shoshani's prophecies to the day. I'm not going to get into the prophecy, but I guess there's a prophecy in Israel because the Jews don't accept Christ as the Messiah, right? Well, there's another prophecy from the Jews, um, uh, Shoshani's and Kadert's prophecy that would specify their Messiah would be introduced in March of this year. And in March 27th is when this guy came in, fulfilling, so-called fulfilling their prophecy. I'm going to say this. If this is the guy, if in the weeks to come we see mainstream media and Israel is crowning this guy as their Messiah, I'm going to tell you all right now, you better buckle up and you better. Man, if there's one thing that this culture is, is, is losing sight of is the fear of God. It's the fear of God. Some of us are still playing with this thing, y'all. Christ is coming to judge the world, each one of us. This is not the time to be playing church. This guy is it. Oh, my God. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I don't have my rapture bags packed. I know I say pack your rapture bags, but we don't need bags. You know, like a Back to the Future. Where we going, we don't need bags. Gonna be transfigured by the blinking of an eye, man. And I always say, I'm, I'm gonna finally get my four vati. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so verse five. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, underline the word restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the, underline this word, Mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Mystery of lawlessness. Isn't it interesting how what we're seeing happening in the world, we can't put a finger on it. But we see things shifting and changing, laws being broken down, societies being broken down. And we know that there is an evil behind all that, but we can't put our finger on it. Second Thessalonians 2 describes it. It is a mystery of iniquity. And it says, it's at work, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Who is the restrainer? Look to your neighbor and say, you are the restrainer. Okay, break it all the way down. Inside you, if you are a son or daughter of the most high God, the living God, inside you dwells the Holy Spirit. This is the only thing holding pure, the purest form of evil back. And I've said this before. There are people on, the, on this earth that absolutely hate and detest who you are. Because in their mind, they have this place, this fantasy of a world without Christians. The whole COVID thing, as soon as COVID broke out, the demons in Hollywood started singing a song. Okay, and if you remember back when I heard it, I told you guys, like, yo, this is something up here, y'all. Let me ring the fire alarm here because something is weird. I'm going to tell you what it is. A COVID thing happened, and now you got all these Hollywood artists going on YouTube and uploading them singing the song Imagine. And you know what the song Imagine? Two years before, I preached a whole series on End Time. And it's the anthem for the new world order. And the words start, imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. And then it goes on to talk about this one world government where wealth is destroyed, there's no poor, there's no rich, everyone is under one realm of government. As soon as COVID happened, why in the world would Hollywood actors be uploading the anthem of a one world government? 
Only he who restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. Our God won't lift a finger. He'll just speak a word, and the devil will be, will be done with. In fact, the Bible says in Revelation, he calls one angel to bind up Satan. That's it. People say, oh, there's this, this battle, this war. There's a war, but it's like a Goliath and an ant, okay? The devil knows his time is short. He's like that maniac, suicidal guy that you broke up with, and if he can't have you, no one can. So he's going to kill you and he's going to kill himself. That's, that's, that's Satan. So the coming of the lawless one, in accordance with the verse 9, um, the coming of the lawless one, in accordance with the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, um, and will all, with all unrighteousness, deception, among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now, when, I, when, I, when you go back here, in accordance with the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Now, would you agree with me that 2020 was really weird? Right? Everybody with me there, right? 2021 is beginning to even become weird as well. We're hearing this, this talk about all this weird stuff. COVID passports. There's another piece to this, y'all, that I preached for years. For years. And when I first started preaching this stuff, a lot of the pastors and friends of mine would be like, yo, Ev, stop it, man. That's weird. And I'm like, but you don't understand. You don't, you don't know what I know. Like, it's in the Bible. And it was the topic of ufology, UFOs. Okay? And you're thinking, what does UFO have to do with the Bible? That's part of the lying wonders. That's a part of the deception. Now, most of us in the U.S. don't understand and don't even know this. Most of us don't know this. But Trump signed an executive order giving the Pentagon and giving the government six months to come clean with the whole UFO question. The Pentagon, a few months back, I think the end of last year, already began to release UFO footage. And they, they are saying that these, these vehicles are doing maneuvers that is impossible for humans to do. And they're under intelligent control. When I saw that, the government stating that, I'm thinking to myself, this should be the headline news over the whole world. But COVID took it all. And it was like, like a magician. I'm going to do a trick here, and I'm going to be releasing all this information. No one's going to even focus on that stuff. So we're still in the, in the countdown for the six-month period for the government to release. So what am I saying? I don't know what tomorrow holds. But I keep telling people, if you're not anchored in the word, that whole lying, what, is, what does the Bible say right here? Verse 9, the coming of the lawless one is in accordance with the working of Satan with all power, signs, and what? Lying wonders. Lying wonders. 2021 may make 2020 look like nothing. I'm just saying. Okay. And with all unrighteous deception, verse 10, among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Now, that strong delusion, in my opinion, I'm not 100%. I, this is when, when things that are biblical, I'll tell you. Doctrine, I'll tell you. Things that the Bible says, I'll tell you. But when it's my opinion, I'll tell you it's my opinion. I, it is of my opinion belief, in my opinion, that I think part of the powerful delusion will be the, the delusion of the so-called UFO uh, theory, the aliens. And even here, you may be saying, like, Pastor, why, again, why are you talking about that? That's kind of weird. It's taboo. It's stuff. 30 years ago, I would agree with you. Today, more than half of Americans, I think the last I checked was 70, 80 percent of Americans believe that there's extraterrestrial life. I'm like, I could have saved NASA billions of dollars. I'd have just told them, of course there's intelligent life. His name is Yeshua, Jesus. 
the, the Bible says that the host of heaven cannot be numbered. The human story is only 6,000 years old. God is an everlasting God. There's never been a beginning. For you to imagine that in billions, trillions, quadrillions of years, this God that we serve sat on, on nothing and did nothing is ludicrous to me. Just look at the galaxies and you see how vast. So the Bible talks about angels, about seraphim, cherubims, all kinds of creatures. Now they're going to twist that and they're going to introduce this whole alien. And you know what the lie is? We've been seated on earth by aliens. We misunderstood God of the Bible as God. He's just an intelligent being that seated us on earth. Trust me when I tell you that, that's going to come. We may not be here for the worst because... And I've always said this, if, if people listening to me and, and they, they're thinking, that sounds crazy, Pastor Ed. That sounds crazy. I'll ask you a question to answer that question. What is crazier than billions, not billions, hundreds of millions of people disappearing in the blink of an eye all over the world? What's crazier than that? Do you think the government... Social media, the mainstream media is going to come and say, guess what, guys? We've been left behind. Buckle up. The seven-year tribulation. Oh, my God. Armageddon. No. They're going to have it on video camera. Cats disappeared. Planes crashing. Cars crashing. The scripture says the hearts of men, of, of men will fail them for what is coming upon the earth. They're not going to blame it on the rapture. They're going to. They're going to conjure up some weird thing with aliens, I'm sure, involved in it. And they're going to muster the whole world to form a government to, to combat and engage God in warfare, which the Bible clearly states that. That's another message. Persecution of the falling away. I want to, I brought this, we've, we've shared this, I've shared with you guys this before. I wanted to bring this because the whole Nas thing, I know this is like the third Thursday I bring up Nas. But I want to show you something that happened after I told you about this whole thing with Nas. And I'm going to show you the evil. The spirit of the Antichrist is like a foaming dog. And the chain are Christians in the church and the Holy Spirit is chaining this dog that was bred for destruction. And now as the spirit of the Antichrist begins to infiltrate our culture, we're now beginning to see it. he is being, guys, He's being unveiled. He is disrobing himself. And if, you're, if you just have spiritual eyes, you can see it. It's not hiding anymore. Pull up that, that this, is, this is CNN. Listen to, what it, listen to what they said. Lil Nas X and his new song are speaking volumes for millions of queer folks especially black queer people who have suffered, watch these words, listen to these words, who have suffered spiritual and theological violence, guys, at who? who who's, who's the violent people? At the hand of church doctrine. You may just read that and it just go over your head. Understand, please understand, CNN is a mainstream media source. Media drives public opinion. They're able to program people to think. So it, look at how crazy this is. Not only do they have, do they make a statement that this individual has suffered violence, spiritual and theological violence at the hand of a church, church doctrine, which I'm, I would be probably guilty of that. But they choose a guy that released a shoe that is satanic in a video that I wouldn't dare to have any even adult watch. It's so vile and so disgusting. That's what they choose. So they glorify him and they demonize the church. This is, this, is the, this is the evil. If you can't see this evil right now, we need to pray that you get resurrected because you're dead. Just bottom line, if you can't see it. And, and listen, and I'm going to go there. This is the same organization that a lot of Christians still believe for, for truth. 
to be conveyed. If you can't see it, if you're a Christian and you're still swallowing this vomit, I'm going to pray for you because you deceived. Go to the next one. To make, to make matters worse, they released another thing right here. Lil Nas isn't worshiping the devil. He's healing deep hurt. They're still praising him. And I'm thinking, guys, you got, you're probably going to clean this up from the first one. No, they make it worse. They make it worse. This is what they say. His music video for Montero, Call Me By Your Name, which shows the rapper giving a CGI Satan lap dance and killing him, went viral. Meanwhile, watch this. You want to you wanna see what evil looks like and how they mock us? Every Hollywood movie that portrays a preacher, the preacher is always the buffoon. He's always the hypocrite. They detest Christians. And I'm saying this to you guys not to remove hope from you. If you had any questions, if there was a devil, this right here proves it. And if you had any questions, what is he after? He's after the church. That's who he's after. That's the only threat to his kingdom is the church. But as I say many times before, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. He already knows he's lost. So meanwhile, high-profile pastors are referring to him as a thug and accusing him of Satan worship. Yes, CNN is what he's doing. The governor of South Dakota tweeted Bible verses at him. A black conservative who once pretended to be a Georgia elector implied the singer's soul was in peril, tweeting, hell is hot. Amen, pastor. It seems that some conservatives, many of whom famously, watch this, whine about cancel culture. This is a slap in every conservative, every Christian's face. They whine about cancel culture, are trying to cancel the musician. I'm going to pause right there. This, this video in the shoes was so vile that even Lil Nas fan said, you, I, we can't follow you no more, bro. Like, this did it for us. We liked your music, but you've gone too far. I'm not involved. I'm not going to be involved in that. I don't know if I shared with you guys. There's a, there's a, did I share with you guys about the kid that uh, ordered, they sent him a, a shoe? He's on YouTube. Uh, I think he's called the Snicker Guy or something. They, ordered, they, he, they sent him a shoe for free because he does reviews. He's got a lot of followers. So I saw the unboxing, saw the video where he unboxed it, showed the whole shoe. The very next day, very next day, he goes on there and he says, I'm throwing this, these things away. One day, this shoe in my house, I, I woke up paralyzed. I felt like something was in my room. It was cold. It was all this stuff. I felt like something was sitting in my chest. And it, he shows him throwing the, he films himself throwing the shoes. He's like, I don't need this negative energy, man. I believe in God and they send it to me for free, but I'm done. And I'm like, good for you good for you. So Lil Nasty, who was born uh, Montero Lamar Hill, is remaining unapologetic on Twitter from his reaction to the outrage. It's clear that he isn't afraid of your hell. That's what they said. He isn't afraid of your hell. We pray for him. We pray for him. Always remember, people are not our enemies. The spirit behind them is. Always remember that. It's very easy to, to, to villainize somebody, but as, as long as this person is still breathing, there's hope for him. Amen? Go to the next one. These, these are the things that all happened within the last couple weeks. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Um, the video. Oh, yeah. So how many have seen this video? All right. Okay, th th these are the things that are happening. And it's funny that you don't hear this about, it's not happening in, in Muslim communities, it's not having, happening in any other religion outside of Christians. This is what's, this is, right now, they, they said since 2020 pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, to date, it's been reported that about 340 million Christians have fallen under severe persecution globally. One-third of a billion Christians are under persecution. I saw this video. It made me sick. He, it's a Polish pastor at a Canadian church. Viral video shows pastor kicking out officers from church Easter 
weekend. I'm sorry, not Easter. I think it was Passover. It was Passover weekend. On Passover, six cops show up at a church in Canada, Polish pastor, show up in force. And in the video, it shows the pastor. I love what he said. He's like, get out, get out. And the lady's trying to talk to him with the mask and, and six other cops. And he's just saying, get out, get out. And then he starts calling them Nazi. Unbelievable. How do you come to our church to disrupt service on the day of Passover? And I agree with that. Because that's what's expected when we visit history and see what Hitler did to churches. That's what they did. But this is happening right now in our timeline in Canada. It's not the only church. Another pastor in Alberta, bring up the next one, health services came in. Physically, the guy wakes up at 7 in the morning. Now, I want you to imagine this if, if, if this happened. When we show up on a Sunday morning, you all come up on a Sunday morning, you pull in the drive and you see cops all over putting a fence around the, this building. And you're saying to yourself, wait a second, it's, it's service on Sunday. What are you guys doing? You guys have violated COVID-19 um, requirements, guidelines. We're shutting you down. This is what happened with this guy. Alberta Health Services physically closed Grace Life Church and has prevented access to the building until the church and senior pastor James Coates can demonstrate the ability to comply with Alberta's chief medical officers of health regarding COVID-19 compliance violations. The ministers of health have become the rulers of the world. They're the ones that dictate. We have been, as a society and as a world, on house arrest because some health officials deemed it was too dangerous for us to walk out of our houses. That's, that's, that's cra over something that has a 99% recovery rate. Okay? Go figure that. Heather, I think, I think it was Heather that told me. She read something, and I may, may butcher this, so if you want to help me out, feel free to. She said the example that she saw, because with vaccines, they say if you take the vaccines, you still have to wear the mask. You may still get COVID, you may still transfer COVID. So she said she read something where it was, and I love the example, the analogy. She said it was like, the example that they gave us, like, if they said about condoms, right? If they said you can wear condoms in, when it comes to HIV, you can wear condoms, but you're still going to be able to get HIV. You're still going to be able to transfer HIV from one person to another, and it will not forbid you from, from actually getting it. What's the purpose for a condom? None. But this is the insanity everybody's buying into. No one thinks. Common sense goes out the window because of fear. Amen? Now, Matthew 10, 21 and 22. Let me go through this real quick as we wind down. Listen to what it says. Now, brother will deliver up brother to death. This is Jesus speaking. And a father, his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Now, I want you to pause there for a second. I'm going to continue reading 22 here. Jesus is talking about a time, guys, where blood brothers will betray one another unto death. That is a violation of conscience that I don't even have an, a, a, a way to explain how evil this is. I will tell you, I've experienced a little bit of this. Before COVID-19, I don't know if Heather remembers, I went to Florida. How many remember the Ebola, little season of the Ebola crisis? You remember that? Guys, listen, this freaked me out. I'm, I'm be honest with you. I'm in a plane, and this is when the Ebola fear was like, it was, it was starting. Like, you know, oh, my gosh, it, it's going to spread. And news was, I mean, they, the fear-mongering, these guys have mastered the ability to convey fear, man. They've mastered it. In the airport, it was, it was showing everything. So I'm in a plane, and this guy, a uh, few aisles down from where I was sitting, and there was another guy sitting next to me. This guy starts coughing, and it's a, he can't stop it. <coughs> he's coughing, he's coughing. And the guy sitting next to me calls an uh, uh, airline stewardess over and begins to badger her to get that guy's information and see if they can remove him from the plane. And I'm thinking, and I'm looking at, and I'm listening to this guy talk, and he's like, and he's talking to me. He's like, you, you know, it's too risky. It's like, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, 
we don't know, you know, if he's got it, blah, 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 and this and that. And for, for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, this guy was badgering. Finally, the guy stops coughing. We, you know, we're airborne. We land. And when we come off the plane, he's still trying to talk to the pilot to try to track this guy's information and gather his information to find out, is this, did this guy have it? And I thought to my, I called Heather. I said, this is, this is very troubling to me because, and I, I did not even put two and two together, y'all. I thought to myself, if, if over Ebola, they're able to dehumanize a person to such an extent that they don't look at the person as a human being, they look them, to them as a plague that needs to be dealt with. It's crazy. And then when you think about COVID, this is what the scripture says. And listen to what he says in verse 22. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. Watch this last sentence. But he who endures to the end will be saved. There goes one saved, always saved. Out the door right there. That's just one. But he who endures to the end. We are witnessing a transition and a transformation of a society. And I don't say this to remove hope. I say this to give you hope, to prepare you. Because in the same way that all this stuff is happening, what's taking place is God has prepared the harvest. He's prepared the harvest. Sheena was talking to me. Um, what are you rushing me for, bro? I got, still got 10 minutes. Who told you? No, I'm just <laughs> Go be happy rush over here. No, I'm just kidding. Sheena was telling me about it. This is affecting even education. She, 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 was it two weeks ago, Sheena? Two or three weeks ago, she sends me a text message. And she's livid. That mama bear kicked in. How old your daughter? 14. What grade? Ninth, she was super upset because a book that was given to her 14-year-old daughter in ninth grade was filled with a bunch of vile cuss words and sexual stuff. And she's, she's, she sent me a message saying, wait, pastor, am I overreacting or is this ludicrous right here? Like this right here, and I, and I responded back saying, what's wrong with that, Sheena? I was just kidding. And I didn't, she didn't get, she didn't respond. And I'm like, <laughs> then I had to clean it up. I'm like, you are absolutely right. I read some of, the, some of the things that were in the book, and I could not believe it. And it reminded me of something that happened to, and I told Sheena about this, something that happened to Ali. Was it in middle school where she was at, babe, in middle school? She was in middle school years ago. When I got the, luckily, it was the grace of God, man. It was the grace of God. She comes home with this piece of paper, and she, I don't know how it was on my radar. I don't know how it came, but I was exposed to this piece of paper, and this piece of paper was describing, it was celebrating the Day of the Dead. This is in Pickerington. It was describing the Day of the Dead, and it was instructing the kids of the class to bring a picture of the dead. We were going to have, and it was described, we are going to have a table set up in the back of the room. We're going to bring candles. We're going to have juice, and we're going to have cake, and we're going to break it in honor of the, of the dead people, the day of the dead. And I'm reading this. Being a preacher, I said, oh, heaven, no. Heck no. You want to see righteous indignation, man? My blood was boiling. And I'm like, this is a demonic communion in the school. I told Sheena, I called that school, and I lit him up, lit him up. Then I got a call back from the principal saying, and he was like super apologetic. No, no, we can, we can opt her out. Don't worry about it. It's not going to affect her grade. I'm, we're sorry, and blah, 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 this and that. Guys, listen, it's not coming. It's here. This stuff is here, man. And so the question goes, what are you focused on? Knowing that the Messiah is coming, is on his way. What takes up your time? 
What goals have you set in place? How is your day prioritized? We're, listen, we're working on a lot of stuff. We got marriage boot camp. We're trying to get the families in order in this house. Amen? Because we say this, I don't believe a strong church can be strong without strong families. And the enemy has declared war on families. So we're being proactive. We're meeting every Friday, trying to get the men in order, trying to get the women in order, okay, according to the Bible. We're working right now on developing a drama. Hopefully we can pull that trigger coming October of this year and transform this whole building into another world where we can invite people to a place to see God's power being manifest in the reality of what we call Scripture. And we ask that you pray for that. We're right now beginning to put those things into, into play. I mentioned to you guys last Sunday, we want to try to raise money. Probably this week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, lay out the vision for that. Try to raise money to invest in our social media and our media and our sound. Because I believe as Christians, there's reasons why social media company, y'all, are worth billions. When you have social media gurus, CEOs of social medias, canceling presidents, muting presidents, removing them from, that goes to show you how much power there is in social media. And my, in my humble opinion, I think most churches, we've not even tapped into the power. Because when we're talking about evangelism, and I mentioned this, we can go out and hit the highways and the byways. But guys, we can utilize media for, our, for kingdom purposes. Amen? So shooting videos with some of the testimonies that's happening with the people that in this church, young adults, the married people, people that are coming, getting baptized, getting their lives saved, getting their lives transformed. We need to capitalize on that in advertising. Come see about this man that I met that changed my life. Amen? Last thing, I won't, I won't bring it up, but even now, there was a report just in the last couple of weeks that China is detaining Christians in secret facilities, forcing them to renounce their faith or to be tortured. I believe China is already here. They're present. Their tentacles are in the U.S. They got deep pockets. Some of the politicians have been compromised. And uh, we're going to continue to see this. We're going to continue to see, uh, and I share this with, with Heather, it breaks my heart, man, and living here for 40 years. I feel sometimes I love this country more than Americans that were born here. Sometimes I really feel that. Because I'm witnessing the death of a, the greatest country, the greatest experiment in probably a thousand years. I'm seeing the death of that. And I'm seeing scriptures coming into view scriptures being fulfilled if you're here and you're not saved and you've been playing with God and, I, and I'm going to say it again it's a time to take things seriously okay it's a time to say you know what Lord if this is all happening these are things that are prophesied and you're soon to return I want to make sure I'm right because if you can't live for him now you're not going to be able to live for him in the tribulation period I hear people all the time uh, I'll go on the second wave you know, I'm playing, I know I'm playing, I'm young, you know, I, if it happens, I'll go on the second wave. And my response to, if you can't live for him now, with hardly any persecution for the saints, we got this stuff I'm talking about right here, man, compared to the seven-year tribulation, where they're going to be hunting you down like dogs and cutting your head off on guillotines, you won't be able to buy, sell, or anything, you won't be able to be part of a society, you will be the cancer of society. That kind of persecution, you can't live for him now. You won't be able to live for him then. I don't know. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to make it right. Amen. Um, stand with me. reaching out to the community. Jesus asked Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? Yes, I do. 
feed my sheep. That was his qualification. You say you love me, right? Yeah, I love you. Then for, for, for you to prove to me that you love me, feed my sheep. He asked him again, Peter, do you love me? Yes, I do. Feed my sheep. Third time, Peter, do you love me? The scripture says Peter got offended. He was hurt. I'm sure what was going through his mind was, why do you keep asking me this? I love you. His response was, feed my sheep. There are millions of people in thousands, tens of thousands in this community, guys, right here, that need to be reached by the gospel. You have that. Some of you that have just now entered into the family of God, God's working on you. But I want, I want this year, and we're, we're, we're planning this stuff. I talked to, to Heather and um, the praise and worship team. I want to plan. We need to talk to whoever we need to talk to to make this happen. To make this happen. I want to set up sound equipment somewhere downtown or whatever and just worship. Amen. Like, those are the things I want to do this year. We're going to do that this year. So we're, amen. It's going to take people. It's going to take, you know, support, financial. It's going to take your gifts. It's going to take your presence. And I, and I, and I plead with you guys. I plead with you. This is the hour. The window of opportunity is closing. I don't know when it's going to happen. Like I told you, I don't see us being here another 10 years. I firmly believe that at the pace this thing is going. So I pray that God will find us working for him. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Father, God, I ask that you help us, Lord. Help us in all this stuff, Lord, that is happening, God. Even when we read about what you endured, what you went through, God. The suffering, the, the persecution. God, the disciples that served you, God. That in the scripture you said that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And we didn't love our lives even unto death. Father, I pray that this congregation that you give us, God, that grace to be able to lay our lives down for the cause of Christ. And like the Apostle Paul, God, I fought the fight. I, I finished the race and I kept my faith. And all the things that we lose in this earth, God, for your sake, let us regard them as dung. Let us regard them as trash because nothing is as valuable as seeing another life being rescued from eternal damnation to eternal security, Father, in you. So, God, I pray over this congregation, every member of this church here, God, that you continue to stir up the gift that is within us. Stir us up to good works because you, you didn't save us to, to have us sit and get spiritually fat and obese, have be, become spiritual diabe diabetics, Father, but you saved us to serve. God, you saved us to produce good works because that is the fruit of salvation. You will know them by their fruits. So, God, I ask that you increase us. Every one of us here, God, increase us. Get us to be mission-minded. Mission-minded, Father. And God, I, I pray for Taylor. I pray for her and tens of thousands of people just like her that are waiting to just hear your love, God, being conveyed to them by another vessel, by a human being. God, give us the heart that beats with yours. Let us weep for the things you weep over, Father. And just let us fall in love, Father God, with kingdom again. We pray this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. So listen, we, we love you guys. And uh, Don, is Don here? Okay. Um, come up here real quick. All this stuff we're planning on doing. Purcell, come up here. Brandon.
Purcell. He's, he's upstairs. He's back here. He's, he's the back here or upstairs. He's upstairs. That's fine. But these people here, these are the leaders at the tip of the spear. We cannot do any of the stuff we're planning on doing this year without prayer. Okay, so, amen. And prayer and fasting. And I told Don this week, I said, prayer is the one of the most overlooked things in the kingdom, but yet is one of the most important things in the kingdom. Because nothing happens, guys, nothing happens without prayer and fasting. That's what uh, loads us up with the ammo to engage the, the, the demonic. So they have prayer here at 6 every Wednesday. You know, and if, if you, huh? And Sunday upstairs. If you cannot make it every Wednesday, at least certain, some Wednesdays, come out. Amen? We need the body to come together into warfare in these areas that we're planning on uh, entering. We're, we're, we're planning on engaging the enemy on enemy grounds. So we need, we need you to, to be covered, to cover us in prayer on that. Amen? And uh, Matt Zaney, come up here too. Well, well. <laughs> yeah. Amen. As you can tell, they're loved, right? Continue to pray for them as well. You know, one of the places that the enemy attacks, especially when our, when our salt is worth the salt that it is, he attacks us in the area of our relationship. He attacks marriages. He attacks us in our bodies, and he attacks us our finances. So, you know, I, as, as part of the body here, I'm just asking you guys to continue to keep all the leaders of this church in prayer. Amen. If I'm missing, I know Sarita's up there. She handles the, uh, the kids. Is she here? She's probably upstairs. But just y'all know the leaders. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Make sure you're here on Sunday, 10 a.m. sharp. God bless.